Okay, let's get started. We're going to look at question number uh, five. This is the first one. We've got three elevator questions we're going to look at. The first one really isn't uh, a typical elevator question because really all it is is a weight attached to a rope. The fact that it's an elevator is kind of not important because we don't really care about anything going on inside the elevator. So really, there, there's not much like an elevator question. Usually when you see an elevator question, we're talking about uh, a guy standing on a scale or something like that or hanging from a rope inside the elevator. And we're talking about what happens to him. So this one is actually really simple. So let's take a look at it. An elevator filled with people has a total mass of 2,245 2, kilograms. And the elevator begins to rise. The acceleration is 0.55 meters per second squared. So what is the tension? So first, I always like to draw a picture. There's my picture. And then I draw a free body diagram. But now remember, I'm not really caring about uh, whoever's inside. I just care about the elevator itself. So the force is on the elevator. It's just being pulled up by pulled up. So I have, of course, I have gravity. And in this case, that will be equal to 2,245 times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, the only other thing going on is that I know that it's rising, so I have a force that must be bigger than gravity. And what is that? That's the rope there, so that must be my tension. So my tension in this case uh, is equal to what? I don't know. I have no idea what that is. Now, do I know anything else? Yes, I do. I know that this thing is accelerating upwards at 0 0.55 meters per second. Whoops, meters per second squared. So let's look at what my net force looks like. I got force net. Now make sure you say net. Don't say force n. Don't do that. That's actually force normal, the normal force. So you want to make sure you write down net when you write these down. Okay, that's 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 really important. So hang on now. Pause this. So what do we got for the net force? Well, what do you write down first? Yes, never forget mass times acceleration. And that equals now, let me look at this. I'm going to have, um, let's say upwards is positive, so I'm going to have tension minus my force of gravity. So what does this look like? Um, well, I actually know the acceleration and I know the mass, which means I know the net force. So what I have is 2,245, that's the mass, times my acceleration, 0 0.55. And that equals the tension, which I don't know. Subtract 2,245. Whoops, do I got enough room? Almost, there I go, I got it, cool. So this is actually some pretty easy algebra. All I'm trying to say then is that my tension is equal to the addition of those two numbers. Now that's going to be 1,234.75 newtons plus 22,001 newtons. Now this is going to give me a happy total of 2,3,2,3,5.75. Newtons. Now that's not my answer. Remember, I have to do significant digits. And if I look over here, there we go. Well, two significant digits. So how do I do this? I have to say 2.3 times 10 to the, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 to the 4 Newtons. So that is my tension force. Okay, and that's that. So let's try the second question. Now this is going to be question, let me see, what number is this? This would be question number hmm, 16. Okay, so suppose you're standing on a scale in a moving elevator and notice that the scale reading is less than your true weight. So, less than your true weight. So what we're talking about here is that you have... Um, a scale. Let me just uh, draw the little scale down there. There's your scale. You're sitting on it. Now, the one thing you want to know here is what does a scale measure? What does it tell you? And actually, this is the thing. A scale measures the normal force. In other words, you are pressing on the scale 
And an equal force is pushed back. That's Newton's third law. So the normal force that you are experiencing is the same force that is pushing down on the scale. And that is what is being measured, which means if you are pushing down more, you have more of a normal force and the scale will read more. So the thing here is that we have to figure out what does this free body diagram look like? So what are the forces on you? Now let's, let's look at this now. We know, we know that you are possessing force from gravity. Now we know that. But what other things are there? Well, I know there's a normal force. But the thing is, is that there's another force because the elevator is moving. And I know it's reading a different scale reading, because that's so it's less than true weight, which means it's not just moving, it's accelerating. So that's a force. There's another force going on that. Now, when we're trying to do these questions, what you want to do is you want to think about how do I feel when this thing is moving? Now, if I feel less, that almost feels like I'm not pushing as much on the scale, which means there must be a force. There must be a force pushing me upwards. So if I had to draw this, I would have this other force. Now we could call this uh, force applied. Caused by the moving elevator, I will feel as if I'm being pushed upwards. Now, what would that mean? Well, it would mean, let's think about this. What is my normal force? It would be equal to um, the force of gravity minus this force applied. And that kind of makes sense. So my weight, which is force of gravity, would go lower. It would get smaller. So you have to think about it. When I am moving, I feel like I'm being pushed upwards. I feel like I'm being pushed from underneath. So that's why I push and point the extra force upwards. We always have to remember what to do there. So how would that happen? Well, if, if the force is going this way, it must be because the whole elevator is actually move, is accelerating. Now let's make that clear. It's accelerating downwards. So that's the important thing to remember. You have to think about, if you want to know what forces you're feeling, think about how you feel. That's the important thing. If you can remember that, you'll be able to make the correct free body diagrams and you won't get any more confusion when you do these things. Now the reason why I'm doing this one first is because of the next question that we're going to do, which really kind of brings this together. So let's take a look at that. Now this is question number 10. Now the man mentioned in question nine, now in question nine it was mentioned that he weighed 600 newtons, places the scale on an elevator. So once again, this guy is uh, standing on a scale. So this is your typical elevator question. Uh, we usually sit you on a scale or we hang you from a rope or we do something where we want to know how do you feel when you're in an elevator that's moving. Okay, so he stands on the scale. What does the scale read if? Now let's look. We have three possible situations. So the elevator ascends at a constant speed of five meters per second. Okay, so that's A. So what do we have? Let's let's look at this. So if you're if you're moving at a constant speed, that means, what does that mean? Automatically, we say that means your net force is zero. So what does that mean? Well, my net force in this case is going to be equal to my free body diagram. And I'm going to have a normal force. And I'm going to have my force of gravity. So therefore, that's going to be force of gravity. Um, well, let's just say minus force of gravity plus my normal force. We're assuming that upwards is positive. So now what does that mean? It means my force of gravity equals my normal force. I already know that the force of gravity is 600 newtons from the question. So my normal force, in other words, what the scale reads is 600 newtons. Okay, so that one's pretty easy. So the question comes up, what happens with B? We have the new, the, uh, the, the elevator ascending, ascending. So it's moving upwards. It's moving upwards. So let's look at this. I'm moving up. Actually, I shouldn't do that in green. Hang on now. I'm going to change my color a bit. Let's, uh, go with a nice, nice red. Okay. So now for B, 
I'm moving upwards at positive 3 meters per second squared. I'm accelerating. So think about this. Think about when you're in an elevator. When you're in an elevator and you're going up, what do you feel? You feel like you're pushing down, like you're being pushed down. So which way is that force? Well, if you think about it, it's kind of obvious. It has to be pushing you down, so it's pushing that way. There is an extra applied force due to the motion of the elevator that is pushing you downwards. Now, what does this look like when I write out the uh, net force equation? Now, before I, before I write it down, just notice what happened, though. The motion of the elevator is upwards, but the force you feel is actually in the opposite direction. So don't get confused about that. But it makes sense if you think about, once I said before, how you feel. How do you feel? I feel like I'm being pushed into the ground when the elevator goes up. So that's what you feel, and the force you're doing, you're getting, sorry, not what you're doing, but the force that you feel is pointing downwards. So if I had to write down the net force, first off, um, it is not uh, zero in this case. It's actually mass times acceleration. I have an acceleration now. Um, but in this case, it is still equal to a uh, force of gravity. What do we got? Force of gravity, negative, plus my normal force. Now, this is a weird one. Now, how are we going to do this? What is this force applied? How do we look at this? I do feel the extra force. So where is this coming from? I have two ways, two ways of looking at this now. This is what makes elevator problems a little difficult for people to understand. Because you have to decide what frame of reference you're looking from. So I'm going to look at two different frame of references because it's going to give me two different uh, net force equations. So let's pretend I'm staring at this person while I'm inside the elevator. Now, if I'm inside the elevator, do I see the elevator moving? No, I'm inside the elevator. So if a frame of reference, so what is my frame of reference? In other words, I'm watching this person. I'm the observer. Where do I see this from? So if I see him from inside, or I could see him from outside. So if I'm inside, the net force is actually equal to zero. He's not moving. I'm moving with the elevator, so I don't see the elevator move. But it does mean that if I had to write this equation down, I'd have negative force of gravity plus my normal force, and then minus also the force applied. Now, if I said, well, I'm going to have to draw this over here, but if I said from the outside, this person is moving. If I'm like looking, if I'm like over here watching this, like, oh my God, look at this guy moving out there. Wow, check that out. Looking at him go, here, this is a mirror. Then I'm going to have to actually say that the net force, that person is moving. In fact, um, mass times acceleration, that acceleration is, like I said before, the plus three. And that is equal. Now, what do I see an extra force in that case? No. In fact, the free body diagram for that person is nothing more than nor the normal force and the force of gravity. So in that case, I would have normal minus force of gravity. Now, the thing is, is that they're both going to be the same thing. Think about it now. The force applied in this case will be the mass times the acceleration, which in this case is 3 meters per second. In this case, the net force is mass times 3, and that equals normal minus force of gravity. And in both cases, the normal force is equal to what? It's equal to force of gravity plus this extra force, which is mass times 3 which means the normal force that you'll be experiencing if it's moving upwards is 784 newtons. That's if you uh, work it all out. Okay, try the last one, and if you have problems, let me know. See if you can do C on your own.